Ever remember back in your primary school days where there would be a lesson about inventions and they would make you come up with an invention to try and fix a problem in the world? It would be stuff like sweets made out of toothpaste so you didn't have to brush your teeth or cars with nuclear reactors as engines so that they didn't have to be refueled as often. Yeah, most of those sucked, especially mine, which was clothes that would be made out of plant materials that would biodegrade over the course of the day to fix the fast fashion issue. Obviously, that was a stupid idea because imagine one minute you're fully clothed and the next you're on a registry. None of those inventions come even close to the harm that was caused by Thomas Migley's inventions. Some even say that one of them was responsible for reducing the collective IQ of the United States by 824 million IQ points. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We have to start in 1916, where 27-year-old Thomas Migley began working for General Motors. He was tasked with making car engines run more efficiently. He found that adding tetraether lead to gasoline greatly improved combustion and efficiency. It also reduced the amount of engine knocking. He presented his work to GM, who quickly realised that they could replace the higher cost of ethanol blends with this cheaper leaded fuel and increase margins by quite a bit. So they ran with the idea, purposefully leaving out the lead presence in their marketing and packaging. The reason for this was that the negative effects of lead were already widely known, dating back to at least 2000 BC. Which, I mean if ancient peasants were scared of the side effects of lead, they were definitely doing something stupid or evil, or perhaps a bit of both. The American Chemical Society awarded Migley the 1923 Nichols Medal for the use of anti-knock compounds in motor fuels. Migley by this time, however, was already feeling the effects of his creation, purportedly having symptoms of lead poisoning whilst working at his new position of vice president of the GM chemical company. His condition worsened as during press conferences, he would reportedly pour the TEL over his hands and inhale the vapours to prove its safety, claiming he could do this every day and it would have no effect. The state of New Jersey shut down the GM Chemical Company chemical plant where TEL was being created. However, later on, the US government, needing cheap fuel, reopened the plant and the use of TEL exploded. So, why was lead in the fuel so bad, you might ask? Well, studies have found a pretty conclusive link between lead presence in the brain with mental disorders such as schizophrenia, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Also, there is no safe level of lead concentration in the body. Even micrograms per litre can cause significant decreases in IQ, especially amongst children. The use of leaded petrols was banned starting the 21st century and quickly came out of use as the effect was starting to take hold. The boomer and Gen X generation grew up constantly exposed to dangerous levels of lead in the air, and now they almost exclusively run world powers. Just imagine how much more competent they would be had TEL not been invented. So you might be thinking, one world-altering invention ought to be enough for one man, right? Well, no, because in the late 20s he was also involved in the invention of CFCs. You know the thing that blew a hole in the ozone layer and gave everyone skin cancer? Yeah, he was part of the team that synthesised the first CFCs. And for his work, he was given the Perkin Medal in 1937 and the Priestley Medal in 1941 by the American Chemical Society. This guy unknowingly, or maybe knowingly, who knows, caused the indirect death of nearly 100 million people due to his inventions and they decked him out like a Korean general for it. Thomas Migley wasn't done inventing just yet, however, because when he contracted polio in 1940, he was left movement impaired. To fix this, he used a pulley system of ropes to help him out of bed. This would be his final mistake, as on the 2nd of November 1942, he was found dead, strangled by the pulley system. And so ends the story of the world's worst inventor. Being fair to Migley, he was just a scientist who was paid to try and fix a problem. He couldn't have predicted that his work would be this catastrophic. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.